Hi, this is Brennan Davis from Bedrock Games and the Bedrock Blog, and I'm here with Jim Pinto for another episode of Metal Workshop. And today we're going to do something a little different. We we're talking about the what was it, the top 66 metal songs of the 2010s or the 2000? Yeah. What do you call that? The teens? Is it the 2000s? The teens. Yeah. Uh, And I think we both had similar reactions to some of the things on the list, so we decided to do the top 10 because as we were going down the list, we realized 66 is a lot of music to listen to. So we, 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 we went to the top 10 and we decided we're going to talk about those specifically today. But, uh, but we also maybe had some thoughts about some of the other things that were higher up on the list. And it's, again, it's from the Loudwire list. I noticed a couple of websites had things like this, like the, the, t- the top whatevers of the teens. Um, and Loudwire actually has two lists. They have the top 66 metal songs. They have another top list for rock and roll songs. Um, so, so, yeah, and was there anything you wanted to add to that, Jim, before? Going if on? you look at the list, there's some great stuff in here in the top 66, right? We're only going to review the top 10, but there's some great stuff in here. Opeth is in here. Gojira's in here. Slayer, Repentless is on this list, but none of these are in important spots. And the top 10 is Anthrax of For All Kings is on here, which was a great album. Um, It makes me question the logic of why they picked the top 10 that they picked. Yeah. I, I had a, like I noticed Judas Priest was on there and they had a really good album as well recently and, yeah they yeah they and like iron maiden was was also on the list and the uh, black sabbath was on the list with the god is dead song and there were a few other things that i sort of recognized as i was going down there um but yeah i, I didn't i don't know if they had any particular logic to it it was it didn't it didn't seem to it um especially as i went down the top 10 list but uh but yeah, so I don't know. Did, did, are there any are there any in the upper echelons that you wanted to discuss before we talk about the top ten, or do you think we should start with the top ten? I just want to point out that number sixty six isn't even a metal song, and that was what frustrated us from the beginning, which led us to say, okay, we got to review this. Yeah, and, and, then, and what was the name of that song, by the way? That was Devin Townsend. I'm an idiot. I think is the name of the song. I don't know the names of his song. Grace. Yeah, it was Grace. Yeah, it was Grace. I cannot stand Devin Townsend Project. Right. It's just. It. It. It just sounded like an ascension to me. It didn't sound like there was much of a melody behind it. It. Yeah. It sounded like atmosphere. It sounded like the picture that I saw on the screen when I went to like the official thing. Do you know what I mean? (laughs) But like. Yeah, I I would agree. I I I don't I don't know who he is. I had to ask you when 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 uh, we were having this conversation earlier, and it it just it it, it didn't strike me as particularly metal. It, I think like a lot of things that I encountered on the list where I had that reaction, it had many of the trappings of metal, but right. there was something essential missing that just I don't know I I I don't know what I would even call that because it wasn't. I, what was what was it I said to you? I said it, I said it sounded like something that Leonard Cohen and Kanye West produced together. Like it, right? It just, right. It, it, I mean, I could see it appealing to 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 an audience, but I just, I I didn't understand the. Uh, it seemed like a stretch that it was being presented as a metal song to me. Um, but but I don't know. We'll get into that topic, I'm sure, because that's a that's going to come up again. I know for my for my notes, I know it's going to come up. Um, and, and we've certainly set a standard for ourselves on the show of being kind of puritanical about what is metal is. And so it, I always at least knee jerk quite a bit when somebody is trying to tell me and we're going to get to them later. Slipknot when somebody tries to tell me that Slipknot is metal. Yeah. I, and it gets it really gets into my under my craw because they're on the top 10. No. And and, I'll, oh, go ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead. I was just to say, I agree, and I think um, I think some of it is our age too. I mean, you're a little bit older than I am, but we both kind of grew up in earlier iterations of metal, and right. so for me, the period that Slipknot represents really is where I saw huge deviations from what I thought of as metal. And so, right. you know, it might be our own biases and our own upbringing and like the when we came of age, but I, I can't shake that. Like, you know, I was I spent this week listening to Volume Four. And sabotage. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I, that's sort of what I would gravitate towards as a metal fan. So, um, so that DNA always needs to be present for me to to sort of re- for the metalness to register. 
Um, right, right, and and I, I hear you, right? I like to go into the past and pick up some pick up some familiar tunes every once in a while. But I spent the week listening to new prog I've never heard before, and I'm trying to figure out, you know, this band called Need out of Greece. I'm trying to figure out what what it is that they're doing because it's so complicated. And uh-huh. this song Orvom is 18 minutes long. We're, it's not on the list. Um, but no, I just do you consider that? It. Do you consider that band metal, or is it another band where you're not sure where they reside? Or? I'm not really sure where they reside, and I'm not really sure what they're doing. But I can't stop listening to it. Okay. Okay. It is so confusing and complex, and there's parts where I don't even think he's singing in key, but. I don't care because I'm I'm unpacking it, and then I'll listen to something. We're going to get to it in a bit. Uh, what was it? Number were they number three on the list? Number four? When we get to number four, I'm not even sure what they were trying to do, and oh, they made yeah. number four on the list. I, I know which one you mean. I think I do. If if you if your yeah. memory is good. So why don't we start with number ten then? Which let's was start the, with number ten. So this was Behemoth, O Father, O Satan, O Son. Is that the name yeah. of the song? Yeah. Um, so you had a thought immediately, so I'll let you lead on this one. Yeah, I, I really, I thought this was a really powerful song. Right? Mm-hmm. It, it was, it was meaty. It was really meaty. But these guys are also very hard to listen to. They've always been very hard to listen mm-hmm. to because the way they mix. There's almost this flatness to the music, and then his tone is so guttural yeah. that um, you're listening to atmospherics more than you're listening to to music. But this song was so good, um, and I thought I didn't know that the ending was going to end the way that it did. I was expecting something different mm-hmm. when I saw it was what eight minutes, nine minutes long. Um, these a lot of these songs are kind of long, actually. Yeah. Something. I well, and then when you get to the new metal, they're all three minutes. Yeah. Now, <laughs> <laughs> now. Uh, <sighs> what what did did you think this was metal? Did, did you have any question about this being metal? Or this is certainly uh, death or doom metal, whatever this category is that they're from. The satanic metal that they're in, it's definitely metal. I don't I don't think it it falls into my narrow tastes of something I would listen to every day. I I have a new term for this style of metal. Okay, I call it cappuccino death metal. It's the kind of death metal <laughs> that you would listen to. You know, in a cafe or something. It's sort of, right. it's sort of, you know, it's a little bit more. The way it's mixed, the way it sounds, the way it feels, you feel a little better about yourself listening to it than if you're. You know, I think the caffeinated metal is a better. Term. That's a good term too. I like because that too. Because it's definitely bringing you down instead of per- peaking you up, yeah. right? Decaffeinated works. Decaffeinated yeah. definitely works. Um, yeah, I thought it had a little bit of a folk metal vibe too, actually. Um, yeah. You know, it kind well, of. I'll definitely listen to it again once we're done recording because I want to. I want to hear more of it. And I want to break it down a little bit more. But my first reaction was, was wow. Mm. No, yeah, I, I, it was it was it was a it was kind of a, a solid start. Do you know what I mean? Now, yeah, the next song I'm assuming you like. This is Tool Numa. Is that oh, the name of the song? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I could talk about this album for an hour. Well, so... you're not alone. I've seen a lot of people <laughs> talking about it on Facebook, and right uh, there was a whole thing where was there like a there was something about a pop star's fans being confused by this yeah. song hitting the charts that I saw right. on my feed. And so it seemed to be, it seemed to be not just getting traction with metal fans, but actually kind of getting traction on social media in general. Um, but this song, which again, I, I used to listen to tool in the nineties. And so I'm familiar with tool, but I don't have Jim's awareness of their later catalog. And right. so even though I think we listened to this album, uh, earlier in the year, or what, or, I know I listened to some parts of this album at least. Uh, this still sounded new to me when I heard it, and so right. my first thought was just that I really liked the guitar tone when I when it, when the track first started. The the guitar tone just kind of caught in my ear in a way that most of the music that was on the list hadn't, because so much of the stuff on the list has that same sort of really deep, crunchy, um, like grindcore kind of a kind of a tone and right. and this was was a little bit more i don't know it was higher up and it just and it and it just it just registered better in my ear and I, I it was almost like i felt like they're good enough musicians that they're aware of what the overall tone sound is right now right and they were deliberately trying to rise above that tone sound with the way they set the guitar um but, My but, interpretation of the album is essentially they've taken everything they've done in the past 20, 30 years and they've said, 
Now we're going to ratchet all the screws down as tight as we possibly can on every aspect of the album. Mm. There is not a flawed note on any song on this album. It, it is like watching a master craftsman build a house. It was a very tight track. It was a very yeah. tight track. And it did kind of remind me of um, like Anima. Do you know what I mean? I had like an Anima yeah. vibe, this song. Um, now, this isn't even the best song on the album. So it's interesting to me that they chose this song instead of Invincible or Descending or Tempest, which are vastly superior songs than Numa. But this is probably the most complicated. Okay. Uh, because it goes through so many shifts and changes and the rhythm is is quite discordant in a lot of ways but tempest is where adam really gets to shine as a guitarist if you haven't listened to it okay um, i'll have to, I, I'll have to check it and see if it's one that i remember but because this one i didn't remember when i listened to it um, yeah though i do think i listened to it when it first came out but but yeah I, I wonder about these lists i wonder if they listen to the whole album at all do you know what i mean right um, it, it, I feel like sometimes they listen to tracks that might have been highlighted in various places. Yeah. Uh, so the next song is Code Orange Forever. Is that correct? That's number eight? Yeah. Um, now, I think, was this was this one of the songs you had a really strong reaction to? Yeah, I think this is my least favorite on the list. Okay, so on, why don't... On the top ten. Why don't you give your response to it then? It, it, it was just a wall of noise. It, I, it, I don't know what it was going on. I don't know what the point of this song was. Um, and I think I actually think I've seen them in concert before. They opened for somebody years ago, okay. um, and they didn't sound this bad. So, whatever it is they're trying to do, it sounds like they're, it's just one upsmanship in the guttural extreme metal category. This this was very grating, and yeah. it almost it's I mean it's got all the hallmarks that I find in that are, that are metal. Like it's got the distortion, it's got the the aggressiveness and all that stuff. But it almost doesn't sound like metal to me. It sounds, it sounds like if metal took a detour, and rather than originate with Black Sabbath and some of these other bands, it originated with just Motorhead or something. Do you know what I mean? And there's like a, do you know what I'm saying? Like there's like a, this is like biker music. Do you know what I mean? It just, it doesn't. Yeah. It, I don't know how to put it. It just didn't really have the. Um, it's it's a flavor of metal I'm not really drawn to. I like Motorhead, but a lot of these later bands it kind of reminded me of like, I don't know, just th that that really aggressive flat tone that a, a lot of the uh, like I think it's grindcore bands get. Do you know what I mean? Just that that kind of a sound. Um, so it wasn't my cup of tea, but I will say it, it. I did hear some sonically interesting things in the track. Do you know what I mean? I heard things and I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. Um, but it just wasn't it wasn't a song for me. Um, so I'm kind yeah, of, I kind of share your view on it. I think. Yeah, it just it, honestly, just a wall of noise. And they even describe it that way in their review, right? Forever absolutely pummels the listener for three uninterrupted uninterrupted minutes, delivering a merciless onslaught of vicious thrashing hardcore. Okay, yeah, I guess if that if that's all you wanted was to get punched in the face, this is the song for you. I mean, you know what it is? There's a certain, like, with thrash metal and any metal that has that thrashing element to it, there's a balance of sort of the rhythm and the harmony, or of the yeah. melody, the melody and the rhythm. Right. And the stuff that is so saturated with the rhythm that there is no sense of melody, I have trouble listening to. Um, and that's sort of where I would put this one. Um, so, so the next one is number seven. It's Avenge Sevenfold Nightmare. Um, so number one, I was unaware that Avenged Sevenfold is considered a metal band. That yeah, that that stunned me when I saw them on the list. Um, yeah, but I'm not plugged in. So am I? Am I off in that assumption, or is that widely held? They are considered new metal and new metal. Okay, which I don't consider new metal metal. So it's it is always frustrating for me when I hear people co-opting the term. And I'm going to be honest, I hate these guys so much I didn't even listen to the track. Okay, okay. That's how much I hate Avenged Sevenfold. They well, well, are... You, you would know this track because they played it to death on the radio for sure. Oh, okay. Like, once I heard That's it, I was fair. like, oh, once they get to the chorus, I was like, oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Um, so so here are my thoughts of it. I liked the melody that they were playing at the beginning. There was, I think they were using a keyboard or a piano to kind of indicate a melody that I thought was going to be a recurring. And I liked that. But then once the song got going, I was just lost. It just lost me completely. It didn't yeah. sound particularly metal to me. Um, 
I did think that the chorus was really catchy. I thought, you know, like I, I understand why maybe they put it on the list if they thought that the, you know, if the chorus is sort of the selling point of the song, but I don't know that the chorus balances out with the rest of the song. So, you know, that's really kind of what I thought of it. And I also, I just, I can't stand this guy's voice. His voice no. really bothers me. And, you know, which, which told me that had to be a really damn good chorus for me to enjoy it because if the voice is bad, you know, the, I'm not going to enjoy the chorus normally. Yeah. Um, they just, they perpetually sound like children to me and I just cannot take them seriously. Yeah, I, I, w- I would say that there is definitely like an adolescent vibe to this band and also just a non-metal vibe. Um, I'll, I'll tell you how bad they are. I'd rather listen to Blink-182. That's how much okay. I don't like Avenged Sevenfold. Yeah, I, I can't, I can't see myself ever desiring to put Avenged Sevenfold on. Do you know what I mean? It's just not something I would ever be like, oh, I need to listen to an Avenged Sevenfold song. It wouldn't, it wouldn't really arise. Um, and so here, you know, I don't know. I don't, think it, I don't think it belongs in the top ten at the very least. It definitely yeah. is an odd... I don't know. And, and also, I remember that song being played on, like... I swear to you, that was played on, like, Kiss. You know, Kiss... The pop station Kiss. Kiss 108 or whatever it is. Um, so here's a reasonable question. Is Loudwire obligated to cater to the tween market when they're making lists like this? Because that would explain why some of this stuff was on here. Well, so here's the thing. I, I don't think they are, and I think that maybe they are guilty of doing that. But in this particular case, this song came out in 2010. I don't think... I think those... The people who grew up with that song are all in their late twenties now. Right. So yeah. I, or in their early twenties, at least, I don't know. I, I think, I, I feel like this one was put on because the, whoever made this list really liked this song. Do you know what I mean? Cause <laughs> I, I don't, I don't think I, and that's almost worse than if they were catering to somebody. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, tastes vary. So, you know, somebody liked event sevenfold. I, I kind of think they're crap. So, uh, oh yeah. So the next one, is, and I'm not going to pronounce this correctly. I, it, okay. But ghost, why don't you give the the name? It's Cerisi. Tra- Cerisi. Okay. Yeah. What does that mean? Uh, I believe. Oh my god! I used to know what it meant. Um, I can look it up. It, That's a, it's, it's not a, that important. It's, not it's that an important. Italian or Latin word. I was I'm, just kind of typing it in. Okay. Um, but, this is my favorite ghost song. Okay. So. I, I did you watch the video or just listen to the music? I did both, but I was primarily listening, and I that, had some that thoughts. That video is just fantastic. So, so here's the. I'll just give you my thoughts in order because I kind of was just pep pounding them out as I listened to it. Uh, I said that it had a nice Slayer like melody at the beginning. I mean, it just kind of reminded me a lot of something Slayer would do in terms of the intervals they were using, um, and I thought that the the riffing was sort of like nice old school 80s metal riffing do you know what I mean just the way that the the riff sounded and I like the use of the upbeat um the vocals I was a little on the fence with but that's kind of I don't know that with metal it's it's very rare that I'm sort of fully on board with the singer do you know what I mean I'm usually yeah. kind of on the fence with people um and it's it, to me it sounded like music either written by people who came of age in the 80s or written for people who came of age in the 80s do you know what I mean Right, it had that kind of a vibe, uh, and I thought that it was sort of strangely sweet at times. Uh, it had kind of like there was like a sweet melody to it. It did kind of it, it kind of veered into watered down territory though. Um, so he's always had a razor thin voice, and the band has sort of a, it sort of fits that category of what Kiss is for rock and roll, Ghost is for uh, for metal. Okay, so they're barely in the metal category, right? And yeah. The number one, when we get to number one, they're on the list again, by the way. Yeah. I don't think number one is a metal song. Yeah, we'll definitely get into that song. But on this so, song, I did have a thought about that, which was I said, I think they're really good songwriters. Like, they definitely know how to write a song yeah. well. And I wasn't sure if it was metal because it felt like it was missing, like, some kind of metal core wasn't visible to me when I was listening to it. Um, but I wasn't saying it was bad because I had a note, like, I really like this song. I just don't know how to think of it in terms of is this metal or not because it it feels sort of a little lighter or something even though they're, they're yeah. doing but it was weird because they're doing a lot of stuff that like if i had a guitar in front of me i'd be like i'm playing metal do you know what i mean so i don't know what it is 
about it that sort of makes me question the metalness. It, it was kind of an it was kind of an odd one on the list for me because I really I liked it, but I just I was really grappling with where does this fit in the metal genre. Um, but but what you say makes sense. They're sort of just barely metal, and I guess yeah. that kind of makes sense. Um, Check out a song by them called Ritual. Um, you've never heard more razor thin vocals in your life. He's almost not singing. Okay. Because. Okay because of how he's bringing the lyrics across um but this song like i said this song is my favorite from ghost this one okay. is just the moodiest and by the way seriously means church um oh okay okay uh it's just a moody moody song and i just really love it for that and then of course the video just reminds me of carrie and all those crazy horror high school movies it was a really good song i like the song a lot and as much as i questioned its metalness i I felt like they were the, they were just good songwriters. Like these people definitely yeah. know music. Um, so here's the secret of the band: the the singer is the only consistent member of the band. He he writes all the music. He, he tells the players, the, and then he just hires part time musicians to do all the music, and he tells them what he wants. So I think that sort of reinforces a lot of what you're talking about about why it's so thin. Okay, that might make sense in a way. That's a, that, that would explain why it's such well done songwriting, but it doesn't feel like metal because when you get like a studio band, you're going to have the top musicians in there that are right. good players, but they might not all be really into the metal sound. And I, right. I can sort of see where that would happen. Um, and he gets different musicians for touring, and then different musicians for each album. So it is all him. I mean, I think that's fine. If it's one guy who's sort of constructing it all, I'm fine with that. I think that that can work. Um, you know, it, but it definitely gives him a different sound than if it was a band. I think. I, I think that's probably where, that's probably where the issue is coming from, in terms of placing them. Um, now, the fifth song on the list is Megadeth Dystopia. Um, yeah. So, you know. My, uh, so my rea- I'll give my reaction first because I've, I've let you lead on many of yeah, them yeah. and I don't want your opinion of this to sway my opinion in any way <laughs> um, so so number one I was kind of getting used to Mustaine's new vocal effects on this song because I'm much more familiar with the older uh, Megadeth catalog than I am with the more up to date stuff uh, so it's, it's just not it's it's not I'm not I haven't like bought every Megadeth album since Rust in Peace or something do you know what I mean so right. uh you know the the vocals took a little bit of adjustment for me. I thought it was a good song. I really liked the opening. Um, I thought the melody cut through really nicely, and I liked the phrasing that he was using. And I think some of that might be me being biased because I know Mustaine understands how to construct songs on the guitar. Um, but I felt like it was it was proper metal phrasing and not just chug chug chug. Do you know what I mean? And and some of the stuff on the list to me felt very chug chug chug. So. Mm-hmm. You know that, you know it was good enough that I was like, you know, maybe I should go and check out Megadeth's new stuff more, because because uh, that song intrigued me. Um, but you know, there, you know that said, there's probably other songs on the list that I would on the '66 list that I would enjoy more, but I I liked it. So you, what's your thoughts? Um, I thought it was repetitive, and I I can see the desire to want to put Megadeth on the list, right? They're a hallmark of the genre. Yep. Yeah. And they couldn't put anything from Super Collider on there because that album was just so bad. But Megadeth peaked with Rust in Peace. Well, that I would and, agree with you on. I would definitely agree um, that Rust in Peace was their high point. Trying to put them in a top ten of metal from this decade is – it's questionable, right? But then when you compare I, it to the other songs in the list, wouldn't you say sure. that it – you know, I if I it, go up to number forty or whatever, there's an Opeth song. Oh no, right? I mean the top I ten. Would, I mean like yeah, but in the, of course this is yeah. better than a lot of the top yeah. tens. No, no argument there. But it's not better than number twelve. Um, what was number twelve? It was a Judas Priest song. Okay, from yeah, the yeah. Latest album. Well, what I was gonna say is now that you say if their if their motivation is to get Megadeth on the list, there certainly were other contenders that had names like that that right. would be better picks. That's why I said you know there are other ones in the list that would I would like better um, but what I liked about this song was it got a lot it had like as we were as I was going through this top 10 list and listening I kept saying is this metal with a lot of them even even when they sounded kind of metal there was something missing and yeah. this had a lot of the core things that I just look for in metal so it felt I don't know it felt refreshing to hear it uh, right. you know um, but but I really did like the uh, the the opening melody on this one and I 
I and, and I would agree with you. It, it, this is from an era when metal was kind of more repetitive by nature, too. Not not that this song came out in that era, but he comes from the era when you could kind of. This was before like Facebook and stuff, and before our attention spans got shot. And I sure. feel like we had more forgiveness for repetitive music back then. Does that make right. sense? And I feel yeah, like yeah. now you can't do repetitive music because if it doesn't change every five seconds, our brains start to freak out a little bit. Um, and so I'm, I'm kind of always asking myself whether that's a good or a bad thing. Because on the one hand, it does kind of get dull if a song is like riff, chorus, riff, riff, chorus, and it's the same stuff over and over again. On the other hand, I I used to be able to listen to the same riff over and over again without a problem, but so I don't know. I can see what you're saying with the repetitiveness, um, but I think there's a bigger topic in there too. Um, but I don't know. Any other thoughts I, on this song? Or I don't. I don't hate it. Right. I, I don't want to make it sound like I'm 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 poo pooing it. I'm I'm glad Megadeth's on the list. I'm a huge fan of Megadeth, but um, I just I question the placement. No, and I'm not I'm not knocking your opinion. By the way, I was just kind of that prompted some thoughts when you were talking about the repetitiveness and things like that. The um, cover is awful, by the way. The cover is just. Like the literal cover of the album, or yeah, yeah, the cover the, of the album is. I mean, again, I feel like their album covers haven't really grabbed me since Rust in Peace. Um, Everything's yeah. equally saturated. There's no focal point, and you can't even read the logo off of that background because it's the same exact color. Okay, I, I have to look at it to see what you're saying, but yeah, but you also it's have on a much more right now, and it's really bugging. Me. You have a much more critical eye when it comes to like design yeah. and layout and stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah of um, course. I'm, I'm being me right now, and I probably don't need to be because if everybody likes it, it doesn't matter. But well, I haven't it, heard anybody rave about the album cover, but then I don't really hear much about album covers anymore. So, you know, um, now that the next one is uh, "Bring Me the Horizon" by Shadow Moses. Um, this I think uh, we both the have Horizon big is the name of the band. Shadow Moses. Oh, is it, the name of the okay, I wrote it down wrong. All right. Yeah, yeah. Not not that I care to be honest. Like, yeah, this was yeah. this was so terrible. I don't know why I corrected. Yeah. Uh, this was this was the, one of the most awful songs I've heard in a long time. Um, it was so bad. Yeah. Uh, go, go, on. go on. This was so it was two things. It was the chug 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 that I'm talking about. Like a good yeah. portion of the song was just the chug chug chug, and the other portion of it was this part that was meant to be emotionally appealing in some way and have heft to it, and it just didn't. It was like it was just like a big whine is what it sounded like to me. It, it I had I had no interest in the music, I had no interest in the lyrics, and the guy's face was even annoying me when I saw the oh video. Oh my god, yes. Yeah. yeah Thank it, you for saying it. Thank yeah. you for saying that. I, I could not believe do you remember I have a lot to say here. Do you remember in the eighties when a band like Testament would get into a fist fight backstage to defend the honor of their band? Yeah, yeah. Right? And you look at these guys, and I can't even imagine them standing up for themselves if somebody was actually punching them. They all, he looked so annoying and pretentious and preening. Yeah. He kept yeah. showing off his tattoos for whatever reason, and I don't know what the logic was there. But he was all about image over any kind of substance. Just looking at him, you could tell that. And I wanted to like parts of this song. I really did, right? I said, okay. I know I'm not going to like this. Looking at these guys, I know I'm not going to like this. But there were these tiny little moments of brilliance in the song where you would hear just a couple notes and you'd think, yeah. oh my God, it's about to get good. And then, of course, he starts singing about a breakup with a girl in the most non-poetic, ninth grade, high school, journal, bullshit way. And I just wanted to punch him. This this band shouldn't be doing metal. They should be doing, what was that, what was that song, Sale? Do you remember that song, Sale? The, no. the one that was like all pentatonic and the guy just keeps saying it, it was it was sort of it played on the pop stations a little bit but also got some rock station play they belong in that genre they don't belong in the metal genre I think um, at least to me like I didn't get that I just don't get the I, I didn't get a powerful enough vibe from the band kind of like you were saying with the they just they just don't look like what they're trying to sound like and what they're sound, trying to sound like doesn't feel like it's coming across the right way and it just to me it was just wrong in all kinds of ways so do you remember do you remember when Hoobastank came out and everybody was comparing them to Tool I don't remember people comparing them to Tool but that's a really bizarre comparison in my opinion I I remember people comparing them to Tool and it really bothered me because Hoobastank is 
four four time and it's really lazy and it's boring and it wants to be emotional when it's not uh the the same thing with a band like lincoln park or whatever that's what this reminded me of except you'd have to compare these guys to these are the modern day version of hoobastank okay right? i can see that i can but hoobastank didn't even sound like tool at all like even if you remove concerns about time signature and all that there yeah i see no unless there's hoobastank I, songs i don't know yeah. about you know, it could have been one crazy guy on the radio, and I'm just conflating mm. it, right? That, with it, but I do remember somebody going on and on and on about how this is the new tool. Okay, that seems. I mean, again, I don't know the Hoobastank catalog. I know a few of their songs, and none of them remind me of Tool. And I never liked the name of the bang, band either. I always thought the name just sounded very off-putting to me. Um, you know, like like I. I, I, like I heard the name and I was like I don't want any part in that was my, my reaction to it um, so so yeah so yeah I would agree this is the Hoobastank of the list at the very least um, now number three is is one I'm sure we might not agree on all the points but I think we're going to have a lot of agreement in general about this one it's a uh, <sighs> Slipknot the Devil in I um, now my first note is the Insane Clown Posse of Metal um <laughs> <laughs> oh my god but I will say this about the song I can't stand Slipknot but it was better than a lot of the other ones that were on the list <laughs> um, you know it, oh. it, it, I don't know it, 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 uh, this song was oddly refreshing even though I couldn't stand it, it, it uh, um because it actually sounded like they were trying to sound metal, even though they were missing the mark a little bit. Like, yeah. um, not uh, a little bit. <laughs> well, here I have. Okay, do you want? Here's my full thought yeah. in note form. Just, oh, so I said they I, have many of the trappings of metal, but there's an undercurrent of early '80s new wave pop or something. It just sounds like it doesn't have a metal core, and the stuff that does have a metal core is very motorheady. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's just like a I don't know. Again, I keep coming back to that for some reason, but but this this song just felt like it was missing. I don't know something. You know what I mean? There was like a spark missing from it or something. But everyone, but but I could sort of see like some of the aesthetics of metal present there. So that's why it was refreshing to me. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Any other thoughts on this song? <laughs> I was at Ozfest too, and Slipknot was there. And they were playing on the second stage. And I didn't know who Slipknot was. And I saw a bunch of kids going out there. And I saw the logo, right? And I thought, oh, that's probably not the kind of metal that I'm going to want to listen to. Mm -hmm. And I saw a bunch of young kids going out there. And they were just getting messed up in this pit. And they came back covered in mud. And I said, what the hell kind of band is Slipknot? And I didn't care. I was listening to Black Sabbath on the stage or whoever was playing. I can't remember. Oh, it was uh, Slayer. Okay. And on the main stage I was at the, there for the main stage because that was all the, the 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 focus core metal music was on the main stage and it would be years later before I would ever hear a Slipknot song and I was blown away at how light it was uh, when I thought it was metal and my wife summed it up perfectly when she said Corey Taylor has no balls in his voice that's, that's, that's it that's it that's really it yeah, th yeah this song sounded very light that's but in a way, that kind of worked in its favor on this list because one of my problems with so many of the songs on the list is they had that chugga chugga sound, and, right. and I like chugga stuff, but I just didn't like how it was all so toned down and grind corey. Do you know what I mean? Like there's like a there's right. just sort of a it's all sort of rhythm obsessed, and there's not enough melody. And so when I heard melody, I was like, well, at least there's some melody here. But yeah, I, I agree. It's very light sounding, and it's it's it doesn't really match the way they look either. Like the way they look yeah. is definitely, I'm like, I'm not going to like that band just by the way they look. But, but then when you hear them, it's like, well, that doesn't even match the way they look. Yeah. And it's, I, I dislike them for completely different reasons. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I, I, I don't understand why this was on the list really. Um, and uh, how pretentious is that album title, by the way? What, the Devil and I is the name of the song. Is that also that, the name of the album? Yeah, it's or? called Five Colon the Gray Chapter. I mean, come on. What what kind of metal are you? If you want to be a prog band with, you know, a pretentious title, you can get away with it. You know, Dream Theater does that shit all the time. But you're not 
You're not artiste. I'm oh, so, sorry. so it's sort of like it's sort of like if Poison tries to do something like that. Yeah, or something. yeah. It's, if it's, Poison yeah. wanted to do a song called uh, "The Melodic Years" and "My Journey into the Abyss," you would go, "What the hell yeah. is going on?" Yeah. I kind of want to hear what that would sound like, though. To be honest, <laughs> from Poison. Yeah, I kind of want to hear what they what they think mm. that should be. Um, but um, <laughs> we spent a lot of time talking about the songs we didn't like. Well, that's <laughs> more interesting conversation. So the yeah. next song is uh, uh, "Deutschland" by Rammstein, which I'm yeah. probably mispronouncing. Um, 2019. Yeah. Um, so, what did you think of this song? I loved this song. I I could not believe that I loved this song because they've never really been on my radar. Mm-hmm. As a band, but that the first off that video, there was an amazing, amazing video. That was an amazing oh, video. Does that God. start out the Tudelberg Forest massacre, or I don't know? They start out in like Roman times, and they kind of work their way up through different periods of German history. It looked like, but right, well, the song is all about. Um, I was I actually went and looked at the lyrics. So the song is all about how Germany comp- constantly conquers everything. Okay, okay. Uh, and so I think they were showing Germany as conquerors. And from their lens, showing how awful it is. Okay. Right. I don't no, think that they're they're no, saying, "Oh, it's great when we stomp all over the world." That's not what they were saying at all. Well, the thing I know about Rammstein is they are like a shock band, so they kind yeah. of always take an ambiguous line and stand on it. Um, yeah. But then they tend to cross over to a better position after once people react. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That seems to be their thing. Um, well, the video but, definitely took a stand, but I think. I always do get nervous when I hear something in German that seems to be praising Germany. Do you know what I mean? Like, that definitely <laughs> gets me nervous. Right. Um, so I didn't know what to think of the topic, but I love this song. I thought it was a really good song. Um, yeah. Rammstein is a band that I actually kind of like, even though they're not the sort of band I would normally listen to. Like, I, I've when I've heard Rammstein, like, I don't have all their albums or anything, but when I've heard them, I've liked them, and I've occasionally gone down a YouTube rabbit hole with them, just kind of yeah. listening to different things. And there's something about them that I like. I don't know what it is. I just feel like they 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 sort of have that spirit that I was talking about. And again, I was not really sure where to classify this band because, in a way, it sounds a little bit more industrial and techno. Like there's a there's a synth lead at the beginning of it, but at the same time, they have some really good riffs in there and the voice really works and the power chords flow really nicely yep. um, so I don't know that it resides neatly inside metal because I feel like this is a band that could just as easily do stuff in other genres but yeah. but uh, but I thought it was a great sounding song I thought that the, the voice work on the song was really good yeah. and I think the singer has an enormous stage presence he's just really good at like I don't think a lot of singer like he was taking up a lot of the roles of the characters in the in the video, and I don't think many singers could do the stuff that he was doing. It wouldn't be believable. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's uh, certainly an iconoclast, iconoclast in the in the metal genre, if they're even metal, right? Because they do so much stuff. You're right, um, but the I think the riffs here is what classify this song as a metal song, and that opening two minutes. I, that's all I wanted. I didn't even want any singing. I just wanted more of that. No, this is this is the song I want to go back and listen to when the show yeah. is over. Like I'm like, yeah. okay, I got to go and watch that video again. Um, and you know what it reminded me of, and you're not going to like this, is uh, Childhood's End by Iron Maiden, the uh, the the song from Fear in the Dark, Fear of the Dark. Yeah. Um, something about the 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 like the the melody of it kind of reminded right. me of that. Um, but you yeah, I can th- go an episode without bringing up that album. I got, I got to always. I well, just be thankful I didn't bring up Destiny's Child. Um, uh, <laughs> but um, I want to point out that the the closing piano was a little pretentious in this. Yeah, and I and was I honestly not sure was that part of the video or was that also part of the song. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I agree with that. But I thought that this this was one of the few that I was like, okay, I can see why that's on the list there. Do you know what I mean? Like that that. That song affected me when I listened to it, and I don't think many of the other songs really did. Do you know what I mean? Like they didn't have that, like you just got hit with something kind of a feel, and and this one had that. Um, so before we go on to number one, I want to talk about number sixty three real quick. Okay, Pig well, Destroyer, The Diplomat. Okay. Because we started listening from the top, and then we realized this is going to take a year. Yeah. Um, yeah. That video was really weird for pig destroyer um the diplomat and it felt like they actually put some money into it which you usually don't see 
with a band that small. Yeah, I, it it was the video. The video and the name really raised my expectations of that song. And yeah. when I heard the song, I was very disappointed. Is all I remember. Yes. Um, yeah. But, but the video was great, and I uh, want to I bring it up because you can see Rammstein's video had easily a million dollars, if not more, to make make yeah. it work. And these guys on Pig Destroyer, they maybe five thousand bucks. Yeah. And yet they still put together something pretty good. Well, the Rammstein video looks like a movie. Do you know what I mean? Like that yeah. looks like a movie. Um, that that obviously took money. They had actors, they had special effects, they had all kinds of stuff in there. They had set changes, yeah. they had costume changes. Yeah, it that was... was that was that was an impressive video. But I I did think the Pig Destroyer video was good. It's just that the music I couldn't get into, and the you know, and again I was really like that. I was like, because anytime I hear a song with Destroyer in the title, it's usually good. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. usually that that sort of I don't know it indicates the band is sort of like this is like our most aggressive thing, sort of like we're doing what we do from the hip kind of a thing. There's just sort of a, I don't know. There's like a, there's usually a raw energy behind a, a song with, with that kind of a title. And this one, I, I just couldn't, something about the sound and the tone didn't work for me. Uh, yeah. The tone was a big problem for a lot of the bands on the list, actually with me, the, the tone of the guitar yeah. was not working. Well, I getting back to the chugga, chugga, chugga that you keep talking about. I think the best Chugga Chugga when we were growing up had good melodic vocals that went with it. Yeah, yeah. Instead of just pairing it with the same exact sound from the singer's voice. But it was also nowadays. Well, it wasn't just that. It was also the Chugga 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 was part of a larger chord progression that was kind of going on in the song. Like, like I guess a good example would be if you look at like Master of Puppets and how the chord, uh, the power chord riffs lead somewhere that's emotionally satisfying. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And a lot of these things, there's no emotional satisfaction in any of these chugga chugga riffs. It's just kind of chugga 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 chugga. It's sort of like listening to a car that's having trouble starting up. Um, and and it, it's it, it's sort of like what it's why I brought up phrasing. There's no real. It's not it's not really an idea musically. It's just kind of a a rhythm. And I think that I don't know that that's missing something for me. Um, I think a lot of that happens over time with experience you finally learn to stop doing that um, and a lot of these bands are just getting sewn together so fast because a lot of people are so young that they don't have the the ear yet that you need well, to develop for I mean, look at Judas uh, Priest when they first started they were not good it took them a long time to develop their sound but I'll still take the first Judas Priest album over oh a lot of, of course you know course. well and again what I'm not saying I'm not saying that music today um I'm just saying on this list, because uh, I've heard a lot of new music that is very good. Um, but I do think that there are, you know, there's a style of metal out there that's gained traction that just doesn't appeal to me. Um, and, you know, uh, I think I think a lot, I think got a lot of representation on this list. Uh, so, you know, the, you know a, lot, a lot of my negative reactions were to the chugga chugga, which I wouldn't normally object to. Like, I don't object to aggressive riffing. It's just that it's the particular type of aggressive riffing where it's kind of flat and there's just not there's not a really strong melody or chord progression at work uh, like I, I sort of expect some kind of shift in key or something that's going to make me say ooh at some point you know what I mean and I, I'm not getting that with a lot of the songs that were on this list right. um, so so number one is uh, Square Hammer by Ghost is that correct? Yeah. and that's yep. 2016 um, I'll give my opinion first because I know you're going to have more thoughts on them than I will. Uh, okay. I said it's a great pop song. Um, it is a great pop song. It's a great pop song. Like this is a really good pop song, and I don't mind good pop music. Um, but I don't know that that should be number one on a metal list. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it should be number one on a list somewhere, but it it shouldn't be number one on a metal list because it's not metal. Um, and we were just praising this band, and and I I. I I have a very high opinion of the songwriting of this band, but my I compared them to the B-52s. Like, it sounds like the B-52s to me. It doesn't sound like, yeah. you know, and I'll listen to the B-52s. They have some good songs, but no, in no universe is the B-52s metal. And <laughs> right. that, that's sort yeah. of how I felt about this song. It's like, it's a great song, but why is it number one on this list? I'll go as far as to say that any other song on this list is a better metal song than, go, than Square Hammer. And I love this song, all right? I love 
I, I'll listen to it all the time and I'll get the melody stuck in my head and I'll be singing it around the house and I'll feel like an idiot. But it's that good of a song, but it's not metal. Yeah, it's it's a top. No, I think neither of us are crit- criticizing the song or the band. It's yeah. just the placement of it on this list is baffling in so many. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe maybe the lines have shifted. Maybe this now is what metal is defined as. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. Um, I'm not plugged in as well as some other people to the current music, but I I, I heard this and I was like, that's a B52 song. That's not. That doesn't. That does not belong here. Um, it's a great song. It's just. It's not. Why? And, and like. And if you are going to put it on a middle list, put it at like number forty or something with an explanation right. for why you're including it. Don't put right. it. Not, putting this at number one is kind of like a giant middle finger at yeah. everything that metal's supposed to be. Do you know what I mean? It's like. It's like. It's like you're contradicting what metal is intentionally in order because you're mad at metal fans or something. That's kind of how it, it felt to me. It almost devalues the rest of the list. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. You're, I would agree. I've okay. My emotional reaction to this 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 being placed here was that I've only had this one other time with any type of review or anything, and it was some guy who did a review of Load from Metallica and reviewed it as their best album. And, and and not only that, not only that, but he started out talking. He started out talking about their previous albums and how I forget the term that he used, but he he described the ride the lightning through the Justice for All period as bland, and and then went on to talk about Load and and praise how it how it how it injected the much needed Southern blues rock back into metal. Um, so that was how I felt about. I, I had the same exact emotional feeling to to this being put there. Um, I'm speechless. I yeah. have nothing to say to that. <laughs> I, I, I'm out of words. So, so yeah. So I don't know. Uh, I don't know any overall thoughts on this list aside from, you know, things we've already mentioned. I think these lists are designed to do exactly what they just did, which is piss us off and rile yeah. us up to get us to talk. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I don't think a lot of. I don't think a lot. I, I don't think there's a lot of qualification as to why these lists are put together the way they are. There's just oh, I really like this, and this it's, is my feeling on this, and then bam, you don't see as much. Anal- analysis as you should see when somebody's making a list like this. If uh, we made our top ten, it would take us two episodes to talk about it, right? Yep. And we would be sitting there busting each other's balls about do you really think that's the best example of pentatonic scale do you really think that's the best example of how a bridge transitions before or after a solo right we would be arguing that way and even with my limited vocabulary in music we would still be arguing that way about whether or not that belongs on the list and i don't see that here i don't see a lot of analysis i just see a lot of if you want three minutes of getting punched in the face, this is a song for you. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like somebody who doesn't listen to metal writing about metal. Like, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not listening to metal because I like the feeling of getting pummeled. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's right. not. That's not what drew me to metal. Um, if if that's what you think, you're missing something. But no, I I, I think you're onto something. I believe what drives this is search engine optimization. Um, yeah. I know, you know, whenever I'm sort of prowling for writing gigs online seo comes up all the time and almost all anybody wants is listicles and this is i think an example of a listicle with search engine optimization in mind and yeah you know and also like you said they're trying to get us to talk about it because they want us they want if you get mad you'll talk about it and then that'll attract clicks to the to the thing right. so probably you're right that's put there because he knows people are going to get a little bit irked and I don't even know if it's a guy. Maybe it's a she. So he or she. But whoever put that there probably did it expecting that we're going to like, you know, that people are going to react strongly. Um, so maybe, you know, what we should be doing is directing them to another metal site or something, you know, like, like we should, say, <laughs> well, we should be directing we, them to listen. Yeah. To yeah like we're not going to link. We're not going to link to the list. And and we'll 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 encourage people to rather than go to Loudwire and read this list. Find us a better list out there and send it to us, and then we can talk about that. That is list. a great idea. Yeah. That is a great idea, and we'll review that one. Yeah, yeah, because this this one, this one, uh, I mean, overall, I just thought it was a 
crappy list and yeah. uh i was really struggling listening to this you know the what i will say the good thing about listening your way through a top 10 crap list is when you get to the gems it's like it's like water in the desert do you know what i mean it's just it's this great experience but the overall it was it was uh there was just there was just a lot of garbage in here um i think what was it tool the first ghost song that was on the list and um the the rammstein and and megadeth were the ones that i you know i enjoyed and, yeah yeah and uh and i liked the i liked the number one i just didn't like it on this list yeah so, yeah exactly i think this is the first time we've ever agreed yeah it is it is i was we and liked I, uh, we liked behemoth oh father oh satan oh son that was a good song yeah and that and that was way up on the list too that was like yeah. was that 66 that one no that was number 10 oh wait a second i forgot about that one what was number 66 again 66 all the way at the top was we didn't like it if i recall uh, Devin Townsend project. Oh yeah. Please. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. Let's not talk metal. about that one again. That uh, was okay. Yeah. No. But yeah. No. Yeah. We we pretty much agreed down the line with some quibbles over things, but other, other but pretty much we were in agreement. I think. Um, so so yeah. I I don't know. I I think I think that's that's it for the episode. Unless you have anything you wanted to add. Um, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty tapped out from listening to to this really crappy list. I, I'm really glad we recorded today. I think this was fun. I, we haven't I recorded it. in so long. Oh, we should comment on that actually, because it has yeah. been so long. And yeah, we didn't even mention it. Yeah, it's been it's been months. I think I don't know how many months. Um, but uh, number one, I've been doing a lot of stuff on my end, work wise, and also there's just been things that have been cropping up that have been hindering me from doing recordings, and so I fell out of the habit. And when you fall out of the habit of recording. It's like daunting to get back into it because you're like, oh man, like you got to shake off all that rust, and and so this week I've been recording episodes, and every episode I'm like shaking off a little bit more rust each time. So uh, so yeah, I'm I'm very happy to be recording again. It was uh, it was frustrating because I'd see a song or be listening to the song and be like, man, I really have opinions about this, but there's nowhere for me to for me to put these opinions. So. So, uh, so yeah, it, it's it's good that we're back on with this, and um, and also I should mention here that uh, there 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 will be uh, the other shows will be coming back on too, like Wusha Weekend and Wusha Workshop and the Bedrock and Balderstone stuff. So that'll all be coming back online as the weeks unfold. Um, I I don't know what movie it was that you watched on Wusha, but um, it was one I really wanted to watch with you guys and talk about, and you had you did it without me. Which one, really was it? It. Which one was I it? Which one was it? I don't. I don't know. Well, we, we, I'll have to go on. Okay, we'll we'll talk about it after because I want to rectify that if that's the case. <laughs> it wasn't intimate confessions of a Chinese courtesan, was it? No. Okay. No. All right. I was I was wondering if that was the choice. Um, it was right. just something Chinese or Korean that I really like, and you watched it without me. Okay, I'll have to we'll have to figure out what that was. Um, yeah, it's fine. I just wanted to call you out on it in public, so, and now uh, everybody knows. Well, I do that, you know, we, we we do so many movies too. Also, sometimes I redo film like on Wusha Workshop, I'll I'll do movies that we've done before which annoys people. Uh, because I want to talk about them in a gaming context and that gets people kind of annoyed that I'm covering the same ground over and over again. Uh, um, so all right, so we'll let everybody go and we'll be back on next time and until then, we will talk to you later. Bye.